There was a time when the alien empire reigned supreme, its fleets stretching across the stars like an unstoppable tide. The captain, once a proud commander in that fleet, vividly remembers those days of conquest. His people, armed with the most advanced technology, had little competition in the galaxy. Every world they encountered was another opportunity to expand their influence, to gather resources, and to enslave those weaker than themselves. And among those weaker species, humans were the most insignificant of all. In the early days of the empire's expansion, humanity posed no threat. Their worlds were scattered, their technology primitive by comparison, and their defenses laughably weak. The alien fleet descended upon Earth's colonies without warning, their ships blotting out the sky as they unleashed a barrage of destruction. The captain, aboard his massive warship, watched the chaos unfold with cold detachment. It was, to him, just another routine mission, a necessary step in the Empire's growth. The humans, for all their spirit, were powerless against the overwhelming might of the alien empire. Entire cities were leveled, populations enslaved, and their resources plundered. The captain, like many of his kind, felt nothing but disdain for the humans. They were tools, nothing more, beings to be exploited for labor, their worlds stripped of value, and their wills broken. The empire thrived on this domination, and the captain relished his role in maintaining that iron grip. In those days, the Empire's arrogance knew no bounds. The alien commanders, drunk on power, viewed themselves as the rightful rulers of the galaxy. Their ships were faster, their weapons more destructive, their strategies unbeatable. The humans, in particular, were seen as a footnote in their conquest, a species so far beneath them that the idea of resistance was laughable. The captain recalls how he and his peers would scoff at any notion that humans could rise against them. Their resilience was a joke, their defiance merely the death throes of a race too weak to survive. As the captain reflects on those years, he cannot help but recognize the hubris that blinded them all. Humanity, though fragile in appearance, had something the empire had overlooked, an unyielding spirit. Driven to the brink of extinction, the humans refused to simply fade into history. They endured, they learned, and they adapted in ways the captain and his people could never have imagined. The humans were not just fighting for survival, they were fighting for revenge. At first, the captain heard whispers of human resistance. Isolated reports of guerrilla tactics on enslaved worlds, rumors of human scientists making technological breakthroughs. These were dismissed as irrelevant. After all, the Empire had faced rebellions before, and none had ever succeeded. The Empire's arrogance, however, was its greatest flaw. As the years passed, those whispers became louder. Human colonies that had been crushed under the Empire's boot began to rise again, small victories here and there that the captain and his fleet regarded as temporary inconveniences. But those victories weren't fleeting. The humans were innovating, advancing at a pace that no one in the Empire had anticipated. They were developing weapons, ships, and technologies that rivaled those of the alien Empire. More importantly, they were uniting. The captain remembers the first real blow to the Empire, a human-led strike against one of their key outposts. It was unexpected, brutal, and effective. The outpost fell, its defenses overwhelmed by human ingenuity and ferocity. It was a wake-up call for the Empire, but by then it was too late. The captain and his fleet had grown comfortable in their dominance, so certain of their superiority that they had never considered the possibility of defeat. But now, the tides were turning. Humanity, once scattered and broken, had become a force to be reckoned with. They weren't just fighting to survive anymore, they were hunting the hunters. The Empire, so confident in its invincibility, was now facing a species driven by vengeance and desperation. The downfall of the Empire was not immediate, but it was inevitable. One by one, human forces began to reclaim their lost worlds. The captain watched as entire fleets of alien ships were destroyed by the very species they had once enslaved. It was incomprehensible. How had the humans, once so insignificant, risen to this level of power? The answer was clear. They had adapted in ways the Empire could not. They had learned from their defeats, growing stronger with every loss, while the Empire had remained stagnant, convinced of its eternal superiority. The captain, once proud and untouchable, 
found himself at the helm of a dwindling fleet. His forces, once vast and overwhelming, were now a fraction of their former size. The human warships, sleek and deadly, cut through his ranks with terrifying efficiency. Their technology had surpassed anything the Empire could muster, their strategies unpredictable and ruthless. The captain, who had once viewed humanity with contempt, now found himself filled with a growing sense of dread. And then came the realization that the tables had turned. Humanity, once on the verge of extinction, was now the dominant force in the galaxy. The captain, who had spent his career enforcing the Empire's will, was now facing the very people he had once enslaved. The irony was not lost on him. He had been part of the fleet that ensured humanity's submission, and now he was at the mercy of their vengeance. It was a bitter pill to swallow, but there was no denying it. The empire had fallen, and humanity had risen to take its place. In the present day, the captain stands aboard his command ship, watching as the remnants of his fleet are systematically destroyed. The once mighty empire, reduced to ashes by the very species they had underestimated. The humans, now wielding the power they had been denied for so long, show no mercy. The captain reflects on the arrogance that led them here, the belief that they were invincible, and the realization that they had been wrong. Terribly wrong. As the captain gazes out at the battlefield, watching the last of his ships fall, he is left with only one thought. They never saw it coming. Humanity had not only survived, they had thrived, becoming something far more dangerous than the captain or his people had ever imagined. The alien empire, once unchallenged and unstoppable, was now a memory, and the humans stood as a testament to the consequences of underestimation. The shift in the balance of power came like a storm. Humanity, once a fractured and oppressed species, had risen in ways the alien captain had never thought possible. Years of subjugation had left humanity wounded but not broken. Their thirst for vengeance had driven them to innovate, to evolve faster than any species the galaxy had ever seen. Every defeat had sharpened their resolve, every loss had fueled their desire to strike back, and now they stood on the offensive, far beyond what the alien empire could have ever anticipated. The humans had mastered technologies that even the alien scientists could scarcely comprehend. Their ships were no longer the outdated vessels that the Empire once laughed at. Now they were sleek, agile, and equipped with weapons of terrifying power. The captain, once so sure of his fleet's dominance, watched in horror as these human warships cut through his armada like a scythe through grass. The humans were no longer just retaliating. In the captain's mind, the situation had spiraled beyond control. His once mighty fleet was crumbling before his eyes and every attempt to regroup was met with swift and brutal counterattacks. The humans were systematic in their approach, each strike designed to cripple the Empire's forces beyond repair. The alien fleet, once the terror of the galaxy, was now little more than a collection of burning wrecks, floating helplessly in the void. It was as if the humans had been waiting for this moment for years, biding their time, perfecting their strategies, and honing their technology. The captain had seen many battles, but never had he witnessed such overwhelming dominance. Every tactic he had once used to subjugate humanity was now being turned against him. The humans had learned from their conquerors, and they had learned well. The alien captain could hardly believe what he was seeing. Human warships darted through the battlefield with unmatched speed, their weapons cutting through the shields of alien ships as if they weren't even there. The precision with which they destroyed his vessels left him stunned. These were no random attacks. Each one was calculated, each shot designed to cause maximum damage with minimal effort. The human fleet moved with cold efficiency, as though they were not merely fighting a battle, but executing a long-planned act of retribution. From the bridge of his command ship, the captain watched helplessly as one of his largest cruisers, once a symbol of the Empire's might, was torn apart by a single shot from a human vessel. The cruiser's shields failed almost instantly, and within moments, it was reduced to a burning wreck, its crew lost to the cold expanse of space. The humans had developed weapons far beyond anything the captain had seen before, energy beams that bypassed shields entirely, kinetic projectiles that tore through hulls with frightening ease. It was no longer just a battle. It was an annihilation. 
the captain turned his gaze toward the human flagship, a behemoth of a warship that dwarfed even his own command vessel. It was unlike anything he had ever seen, a symbol of humanity's rise to power. And at its helm was the human commander, the one orchestrating this massacre with cold, calculated precision. The captain had never seen such efficiency in warfare. The humans didn't fight like the desperate rebels he had once dismissed. They fought like executioners, methodically dismantling the empire that had once enslaved them. In that moment, the captain realized that this was not about territory, resources, or even survival. The humans were not just seeking victory, they were seeking retribution. This war was personal for them. Every strike, every ship they destroyed, was a blow delivered in the name of their fallen, the countless humans who had suffered under the Empire's rule. The captain had once laughed at the idea of humans rising up, but now, as he watched his fleet burn, he understood that their thirst for vengeance had driven them to become something far more dangerous than the Empire had ever imagined. The alien captain's heart sank as the reality of the situation set in. His people were facing total extinction. The Empire, once unchallenged and invincible, was crumbling under the relentless onslaught of the human fleet. Every moment brought more losses. His ships were being destroyed faster than he could issue orders to regroup. The humans gave no quarter, no opportunity for retreat. They were finishing what the Empire had started, and they were doing it with terrifying efficiency. For the first time in his career, the captain felt true fear. He had seen defeat before, but nothing like this. This wasn't just a lost battle. This was the end of his people. The humans were not content to simply win. They wanted to erase the empire from existence. The captain could see it in the way they fought, in the ruthless precision of their strikes. They were delivering a message that the days of the empire's dominance were over, and humanity was now the master of the stars. As his fleet continued to disintegrate around him, the captain knew that there was no hope of victory. The empire had fallen and there was nothing left to save. His once glorious armada, the pride of his species, was being reduced to ash. The realization hit him with brutal clarity. His people were no longer the conquerors. They were the conquered. Desperation gripped him. He had never thought he would be in this position, pleading for the survival of his species. But now, faced with extinction, there was no other choice. The captain, once so proud and arrogant, now found himself in the same position humanity had been in so many years ago, facing a superior enemy with no hope of victory. With a heavy heart, the captain made the decision to open a communication channel with the human fleet. He knew that this was his last chance. There was no room for pride anymore, no room for arrogance. His people were facing annihilation, and the only way to save them was to plead for mercy from the very species he had once enslaved. The message was sent. A request for a ceasefire, a plea for negotiation. The captain hoped that, despite everything, there might still be a chance to save his people. But as he waited for a response, he couldn't shake the feeling that it was already too late. Humanity had risen to power, and they had no reason to show mercy. They had suffered too much, lost too many, and their thirst for vengeance was too great. The captain could only wait and hope, but deep down, he knew that the humans had no reason to spare them. And so, he waited, watching as the last remnants of his fleet were destroyed around him. The once mighty empire was gone, and now, all that remained was the plea of a broken captain, hoping against hope that the humans would show the mercy he had never shown them. The alien captain sat, the weight of the galaxy on his shoulders, as he prepared to send the message that would seal his fate. His hands trembled slightly as he opened the communication channel to the human fleet. Pride and fear warred within him. For so long, his people had been the dominant force in the galaxy, the unchallenged rulers who had laughed at the notion of humanity as a threat. Now, he found himself on the other side of that equation, pleading for mercy from those they had once enslaved. It was an admission of defeat, a bitter pill to swallow, but there was no other choice. His people were on the brink of annihilation. The words were carefully chosen, his tone measured. Even in the face of destruction, there was a part of him that clung to dignity, to the vestiges of authority he once held. He requested a ceasefire, 
phrasing it as a reasonable negotiation between two warring factions, even though he knew the truth, his fleet was shattered, and his species was on the verge of extinction. The request was more than a military formality. It was a desperate plea for survival. As he waited for a response, memories flooded his mind. He recalled how, in the early days of the Empire's conquests, they had dismissed the humans as a primitive, disorganized species. There had been no thought that humanity could ever resist them. The alien commanders, including himself, had mocked their defiance, confident that their technological superiority and vast fleets would crush any rebellion. They had enslaved humans without a second thought, treating them as tools to be used and discarded. Now, the tables had turned in ways he never could have imagined. His fleet, once the terror of the stars, was decimated. His people, who had once looked down on humanity, now faced extinction at their hands. The irony was not lost on him. But there was no time for self-pity. His species' survival depended on the human's willingness to negotiate. And as he waited for the human commander's response, a cold dread settled in his gut. The response came, and it was as devastating as he had feared. The human commander's voice was calm, almost emotionless, but the words carried a weight of unimaginable finality. There was no empathy, no compassion in the reply. The human commander reminded the alien captain of the countless worlds that had been destroyed under the Empire's rule. He spoke of the lives lost, the families torn apart, and the suffering inflicted by the alien species without a second thought. The human fleet was not here for a simple battle. This was retribution. The commander's words were cutting, calculated, and each one felt like a hammer blow to the alien captain's already fragile hope. There was no room for negotiation. No ceasefire would be offered. The human commander made it clear that their goal was not just victory, but justice. Justice for the countless humans who had suffered and died under the heel of the alien empire. Mercy in this context was not an option. The captain understood in that moment that this was not a war that would end with treaties or compromises. The humans had come for revenge, and they would stop at nothing to see it through. As the conversation continued, the alien captain's mind raced. He felt the weight of his past decisions bearing down on him, the memories of the brutal campaigns he had led, the worlds he had helped subjugate. What had once been seen as acts of strength and domination now felt like chains around his neck, dragging him into the abyss. The very arrogance and cruelty that had fueled his people's rise to power were now the reasons for their downfall. He had never considered the consequences of their actions. Until now. He tried to reason with the human commander, his tone shifting from authoritative to pleading. He spoke of his people, not as the cruel overlords they had once been, but as a species now fractured and desperate. He explained that not all of his kind had supported the war, that many of them were innocent, uninvolved in the empire's atrocities. He tried to appeal to the human sense of fairness, to beg for the lives of those who had never raised a weapon against humanity but the human commander's response was unyielding. The captain's words fell on deaf ears, his arguments dismissed with chilling efficiency. The humans were not interested in distinguishing between the guilty and the innocent. From their perspective, the entire alien species bore responsibility for the empire's crimes. The captain could feel the cold indifference in the human commander's voice. There would be no distinction, no mercy. The humans had been pushed to the brink, and now— they were pushing back with a force that would not be stopped. Desperation gnawed at the alien captain's resolve. His voice wavered as he made one final attempt to plead for his people's survival. He spoke of the future, of the possibility of peace between their species. Surely, he reasoned, after so much bloodshed, there had to be a way forward. Surely, there was some common ground, some way to end the cycle of destruction before it was too late. But deep down, the captain knew the truth. There was no common ground. The humans had suffered too much, lost too many, to consider any outcome other than total destruction. The atrocities committed by the Empire could not be undone, and the humans had no intention of forgiving or forgetting. This was not about negotiation. This was about vengeance. The realization hit him like a physical blow. There was no escape, no salvation for his people. 
The plea for survival had been his last desperate hope, but it had been crushed under the weight of humanity's wrath. The alien captain, once so proud and powerful, was now a figure of pity, begging for mercy from those he had once oppressed. And there would be no mercy. As the communication channel went silent, the captain sat in the heavy, oppressive quiet of his command ship. His mind was numb, his thoughts a swirl of regret and despair. He had led his people to this moment, through his arrogance and his cruelty. He had been a part of the empire that had brutalized humanity, and now there was nothing left but the consequences of those actions. He understood, with terrible clarity, that no matter what he said, no matter how he pleaded, the humans would not be swayed. Their desire for vengeance outweighed any sense of compassion. His species' fate was sealed, and there was nothing he could do to change it. The humans had been underestimated for far too long, and now they were delivering the final judgment. The captain, once the enforcer of the Empire's will, now faced the wrath of the very people he had thought insignificant. The weight of his failures pressed down on him, and he knew that humanity's fury would not be tempered. The end was inevitable. The human commander stood in silence as the alien captain's plea for mercy faded from the communication channel. The captain's desperation, his promises of peace, his attempts to bargain for the survival of his species, they had all been laid bare. But the commander's face remained unmoved. This was not a decision born of emotion. It was a simple calculation. The alien empire, once so powerful, had brought untold suffering to humanity, enslaving their people, destroying their worlds, and leaving scars that ran deep across generations. Now, the tables had turned, and the question was not whether to show mercy. The question was how best to ensure that the alien species would never threaten humanity again. The commander weighed his options, but not for long. The alien captain's words, filled with regret and fear, had done little to sway him. Humanity had not come this far, had not endured so much pain and loss, only to show mercy to those who had brought them to the brink of extinction. This was not a battle over territory or resources. This was a reckoning, a judgment. The commander gave the order. The alien command ship, and with it, the last remnants of their fleet, would be destroyed. The final blow had been decided. As the human warships began to close in, the alien captain watched from his command bridge, his mind a tumult of thoughts. He had known, deep down, that this would be the outcome. Even as he had pleaded for the lives of his people, he had sensed that the humans were beyond the point of negotiation. Their desire for vengeance was too deep, their suffering too great. Now, he stood on the edge of annihilation, knowing that his words had failed. His species, once so dominant, now faced extinction at the hands of those they had enslaved. The irony was not lost on him. In his final moments, the alien captain reflected on the journey that had brought him here. He remembered the early days of the Empire's expansion, when humanity had seemed so weak, so insignificant. How easily they had crushed the human colonies, subjugating them, mocking their defiance. He had never imagined that humanity would rise from those ashes, that they would evolve into the unstoppable force that now encircled his command ship. And now, the humans held the power of life and death over him. How quickly the tides had turned. Regret washed over him, not just for his own fate, but for the legacy of his people. The Empire, once a beacon of strength and unity, had been consumed by its own arrogance. They had believed themselves invincible, untouchable, and that belief had blinded them to the growing threat of humanity. The captain understood now that their cruelty, their hubris, had sown the seeds of their destruction. The humans had been underestimated, treated as little more than an afterthought, and now the consequences of that arrogance were about to be realized in the most final way. He glanced at his crew, knowing that they, too, understood what was about to happen. There was no panic, no desperate last attempt to flee. They had fought until the end, and now they would face that end with whatever dignity remained. The captain closed his eyes, accepting that this was the conclusion of the Empire's story. His people would be nothing more than a memory, reduced to debris drifting in the cold void of space. He wondered if anyone would remember them, or if their name would simply fade into obscurity, a forgotten footnote in the history of the galaxy.
the final strike came with brutal precision. The human fleet, efficient and unrelenting, unleashed a barrage of firepower that overwhelmed the alien command ship's already failing defenses. Explosions rippled across the hull, tearing through the ship's structure, as one by one, its systems went dark. The captain felt the deck tremble beneath his feet, and he knew that it was over. The last remnants of the Empire had been obliterated. In those final moments, as the ship disintegrated around him, the captain's thoughts turned once more to humanity. He could not help but admire their tenacity, their ability to rise from the ashes of defeat and turn their suffering into strength. But he also wondered what the future held for them. Would their thirst for vengeance, their drive to dominate, lead them down the same path that had destroyed his people? Would they, too, become consumed by the arrogance that had once defined the empire? As the alien command ship was reduced to debris, the human fleet moved on, their mission complete. The species that had once enslaved humanity had been wiped out, their worlds left in ruins, their fleets nothing more than wreckage drifting in space. The humans had fulfilled their quest for vengeance, and with it, they had secured their place as the dominant force in the galaxy. But the question lingered, at what cost? The human commander stood on the bridge of his flagship, watching the destruction unfold. The victory was undeniable. The empire that had brought so much pain to his people was gone, and humanity had proven its dominance. But as the commander looked out at the wreckage, he felt a weight settle on his shoulders. This wasn't the triumphant moment he had once envisioned. There was no satisfaction in the destruction, no joy in the obliteration of an entire species. Only a cold emptiness, a lingering question that gnawed at him. Had humanity, in its quest for vengeance, become the very thing it had once despised? The commander knew that the Empire had deserved to fall, that their cruelty and arrogance had led them to this point. But as he reflected on the years of suffering and loss, he wondered if humanity had lost something in the process of its rise to power. The humans had once been a species defined by their resilience, their hope in the face of adversity. But now, in their final judgment of the Empire, they had shown no mercy, no compassion. Was this the price of survival? The commander knew that the galaxy would never see the alien empire again. Their legacy, once built on conquest and domination, had been erased. And humanity, driven by its thirst for justice, had risen to take their place. But as the commander gave the order to move on, to prepare for the next phase of humanity's expansion, he couldn't shake the feeling that something fundamental had been lost in the pursuit of that victory. The story of the alien empire was a cautionary tale, one of arrogance and cruelty, of underestimating an enemy and paying the ultimate price. But the story of humanity's victory was also one of vengeance, of the dark side of justice. The commander understood that while the humans had won, the cost had been steep. They had proven their strength, but at what cost to their soul?